I had previously talked about concert riots or fans behaving badly at rock shows, including the time Led Zeppelin fans got the group blacklisted from the city of Boston, or the time Alice Cooper fans rioted at a Canadian show after the shock rocker failed to turn up. The links to those videos are down below in the description box. In today's video, we're going to discuss the time heavy metal band Judas Priest received a lifetime ban from one of the most prestigious venues in America. Back in June of 1984, Judas Priest was on tour in support of their album, Defenders of the Faith. Kinda sounds like a Striper album, doesn't it? By the way, I've done a whole video on Striper, the link is down below. Part of the tour saw the band play one of the most prestigious venues in America, Madison Square Garden in New York City. Unfortunately, that night didn't go as planned. I do want to warn you guys, there's been several versions of this story floating around. And the official story that's been accepted by a lot of people claims that a local DJ named Perry Stone would take the stage before Judas Priest started their show and announced a list of upcoming concerts to the waiting audience. The largely accepted story goes that the announcement allegedly seemed to agitate or infuriate the crowd, maybe because the acts that Stone announced had nothing to do with metal. They would include artists including Neil Diamond and Helen Reddy. Stone would recall, naturally the crowd of 20,000 plus booed me when I introduced myself, but began to get truly unruly when I read the list of uncool acts. Stone in return would then hurl insults at the crowd, but things got pretty ugly quickly. He would recall, the crowd proceeded to throw firecrackers, M80s, cherry bombs, and assorted beer bottles at me. But a photographer who was working the pit that night named Bob Leaf would dispute Stone's claims. He would claim Stone was exaggerating the importance of his announcement the night of the riot, and things didn't exactly get out of control until Judas Priest finally hit the stage. He would claim on his website he had no recollection of flying beer bottles, M80s, or firecrackers during Stone's speech, as photographers in the pit would have likely raised a stink about it to the venue. Judas Priest would end up taking to the stage and playing a roaring 20-song set that was pretty similar to other shows on the tour. But something was off that night. Many fans would sneak fireworks and other explosives into the venue, and on bootleg tapes of the concert, you can hear a barrage of explosions, none of which came from the band's stage show, but rather the audience. I read reviews from several fans who attended the show who claimed they didn't know how the show was allowed to continue, given the amount of explosives in the audience, as well as the fistfights that broke out. All hell seemed to break loose when the band came back for their encore, and one fan would cut the foam out from his seat cushion, while other fans soon followed, hurling their seat cushions on the stage. Soon enough, fistfights broke out into the crowd and chairs would be damaged in the venue. The band's encore consisted of three songs, including Living After Midnight, Hellbent for Leather, and You've Got Another Thing Coming. To start the encore as he did every night, frontman Rob Halford drove his Harley Davidson on stage for Living After Midnight, and would recall in his book Confess the autobiography. It was a great regular gig until the encore. By the time I wrote it on stage, it was like trying to motorbike through a floor-level soft furnishings jumble sale. There were more seat cushions on the stage than in the arena. What the F? Two thoughts filled my head. This is fantastic, our own riot. And B, they're never gonna let us play this place again. Glenn Tipton, Ken Downing, and Ian Hill were by now bouncing on foam to play as there was no bare stage left. Ken later said that it had been like playing guitar on a trampoline. After a quick you've got another thing coming, we scampered off stage and hid. When it was all said and done, $250,000 worth of damage was done to Madison Square Garden, and the New York police would show up in riot gear and arrest numerous individuals. The photographer Lee, for his part, would recall on his website, Afterwards, Priest had a party at the limelight. When I finally walked in, Kenny, who had seen me half buried by cushions in the pit, yelled out, You've survived. The band would receive a lifetime ban from Madison Square Garden following the concert, in addition to DJ Perry Stone, according to Ultimate Classic Rock. Judas Priest frontman Rob Halford was later quoted by Loudwire as saying, The horrible thing is that if we did play Madison Square Garden, there would be some enthusiast who was there from the original riot with his penknife out. It would start all over again, so it's probably best. Things didn't end there though, as members of Judas Priest would head back to Madison Square Garden about a year later to watch a charity tennis match, as they would reveal here on Loudwire. Ooh, very metal. There's actually quite a funny ending to that. Me and Ken went there to watch McEnroe play tennis at um, some in indoor tennis championships. And we went in hoodies and that because we'd been banned from, the, you know, the band was banned from Madison Square. And uh, halfway through the, the tennis match, one of the ushers came down and he went, thanks for the new seats. <laughs> so at the time you wouldn't have had new seats without Priest. I should have said thanks for the new seats. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. And we'll see you again on Rock and Roll Your Stories. Take care.